A good afternoon to you rugby fans and welcome to Marvel Field in Providence, Rhode Island. John Broker here with Dan Rubin, where you see the Brown Bears, the hometown team, getting ready to take on the Fordham Rams. Brown will be in the brown and gray stripes running from left to right on your screen in the first half. And white is going to be the Fordham Rams. Referee Barry O'Reilly is getting away. We'll get Dan's thoughts about this in just a second. But it looks like we are about to set off here as Raphael Lanasur. The biology major from Ion Provence, France, gets us underway. And here we go. Brown in this big matchup. We'll talk about how their seasons are going in just a minute. But Fordham, quick handling of the ball there, right inside their 22. They're having a go as the hometown defense stretches it out. Got some runners here and found one through the middle right away. Big hit coming in. Ball gets spilled. Good work there by Brown. But we're going to come back to the knock on. It'll be an early scrum here. So, uh, Dan, let's talk about these guys' seasons. Yeah, we're going to see two teams, John, that I think we really have to wonder which side of this team we're going to see. And that's the same question for both of these rosters. For Fordham, when they're coming in, are we going to see the same team that lost to Iona or the same team that really put a hurting on Syracuse? And for Brown, same idea. Are we going to see the team that lost to Army or the team that beat Norwich? It's going to be a good question for both of them to answer against one another given the, uh, the talent that exists on both sides of the ball. Brown, coached by David Laflamme. He has world-famous coach Eddie O'Sullivan assisting him, working with the team in a technical aspect for the last month. And Jay Fluke, the ever-present man who's been here since the 70, the director of rugby. Little ball out there and through the middle. First early break here for Brown. Ball is long and over the top. Headed towards the try line of the Brown Bears. And Brown scores our first try of the day. That is Duncan Grant from Brookline, Massachusetts. Touches one down. Great early try there, just using the width of that field. Yeah, great pass from Hudson Lee too, with the fullback getting it off to the left side and from the wing position he just took off did Grant and put on the afterburners and is able to hit the try line for it John that's just a good pass good catch good run and I like the fact that Brown early is going distance on their passing one thing that you know you're going to see is that Fordham if you're playing up the middle they're going to try to crush and try to get that big size up the front and try to surge those tackles from the hooker position instead you're going all the way over to the wing and you're saying look you can attack and pursue for the tackle I'm going to go the opposite direction Fordham Rams here from the Bronx coached by Federico Reinhardt Argentinian master and Ben Foden a very uh Famous player from England, now playing professional rugby in New York City for Rugby United in New York. Has 34 caps for England as Brown is going to try to add some more points here to an early lead just a couple of minutes in. Referee Barrio telling the players just to hold up, and the ball is up. And the ball is no good. We're going to be 5 to nil just a couple of minutes into this. Brown making a good early statement all the time down there in that Fordham zone. Fordham will be looking to answer very quickly, Dan. Well, and, and part of that, John, too, too was that Brown and Fordham, I mean, was that Fordham, you know, when you have those, uh, you know, on the on the on the open side, you've got to or you've got to watch the blind side. And when you're watching the blind side, you've got to be careful not to come around too far, try to hold someone up. I know that Fordham, I think, had staggered their defensive line. You've got to get a little bit more straight and worry about those long passes. Maybe stagger someone back one or two and kind of change your alignment. We'll see if they adjust after that first uh, after that first try by Brown. Santiago. Thompson, a Greenwich High School product, born in Argentina, gets a started there with the kick, and Brown in a good rumble here, gaining some yards here at Marvel Field, looking pretty good. Ball back inside the 22, so he can't go directly to touch. Keeps it in, and there is that man Thompson there. Moves the ball back across to their big number eight, Kieran Rogers from Huntington, New York. Chaminade High School graduate. Players queuing up, looking for this one, and that's one of their big boys, and John Lolly from Flanders, New Jersey. Lolly takes the ball into contact. Bit of a looping pass, looking for a runner here. Fordham just trying to poke and prod their way around that interior defense of this Brown team. See how successful they are as one of the big boys gets a hold of that. Successfully brought in there by Fordham, but just outside their 22. Advantage to Fordham for an offsides there. One of the Brown defenders just crept up a little bit. We'll see if they decide to run. Bit of a free play here, but they have some room on that right-hand side. A little 
Chance for a knockover pass, a little tip pass doesn't work. So we'll come back to the penalty. Referee Barrio spotting the offsides. Really nice job by the second row of Fordham there, John. Uh, keeping things uh, at least stabilized, especially off of those some of those tackles. They did a really, really nice job of keeping the possession going. Fordham was a little slow getting back off the kick, so it was really nice to see them set up, have that second row handy to stabilize things from the front, and then be able to keep the motion going forward. Ball does not go into touch. Well fed back. That's that man who slides back into that position. Rafael Lanasur answers downfield, but possession again for the Fordham Rams. A little bobble of the ball. Trying to sneak through there, work their way forward. That was Eamon Tierney, the county major, New York native. Big hit coming in from Brown. Big turnover. Good look at the opportunity there. Tremendous work, Brown turning it over. Power coming in from Fordham. Can they return the favor they have done? A little box kick coming over the top there. That's Jamie Moraes. Lana Sur. Very tricky and slippery French-born player. Tremendous work right there. You're going to be hearing a, quite a bit about him. Played his high school rugby in Singapore. Very international flavor to this Brown team, as many of these Ivy League schools do have. Ball out there. Brown on the run. Little ball spilled forward by Ali Corbett. Corbett, a big player on this team. Knock on advantage. He's going to go through. Patrick Stack kicks it. The referee's going to bring it back. Doesn't think it was enough of advantage. And eventually, Patrick Stack, the number 13, will talk about that amazing haircut. <laughs> I'm jealous. I want to see him in full flight for, for before we uh, yeah, have a discussion about I'm, it. I am so jealous of that head of hair, man. I call a lot of rugby games, and there's some good hair out there these days. That's that's up there. I want to know if I can, if I ever walked in the house with that though, my dad would get the clippers <laughs> out and say, "Before you leave the house, that's coming off." So credit credit everyone for that. That takes care, energy, love, and effort. The million dollar mullet. Marais puts it in, ball back quickly out there to White. Andrew White, the fly half. Little couple of wraparounds, but a slip pass and great handling there. Brown capitalizing quickly. That's their big number 12. Gets that ball off to Pablo Lavila. Pablo Lavila can't get the pass from Zeller. Zeller, a Severian Brothers high school rugby player, playing very, very well there in this young team, but he's a junior. Well, as a Malden Catholic guy, won't hold that against him. <laughs> And it's going to be a scrum here to the Fordham Rams. But inside their own zone, a lot of good pressure coming on from this Brown team here. Oh, They're yeah. Offense and defense. Yeah, and, and it's starting, John, I mentioned the second row earlier, but it's starting now with the inside center, and they're starting to work their way back to get the pressure, hit the speed. That's what I really like out of Brown when they get that speed going. They just have to hit those passes, get a little more crisp with the fundamentals, and someone will be off for another break. Ball off the back there, trying to get a little movement, but only moving across is the big Fordham number eight, Rogers, 21-year-old. Turned over again quickly, but knocked on in there. Pulled it away in the tackle initially, but knocked it on. So we're going to have another scrum here to Fordham. You know, I think both these teams just really trying to push it right now and make an early statement. To yeah. try on the board here for Brown. Yeah, and, and what we're seeing is, is is that Brown's trying to do that with their speed. Brown's trying to get a little bit faster than Fordham. Fordham can't keep up right now, so Fordham's trying to counter it, stay a little bit more to the middle, use their size advantage. They've got a couple of really big boys in there at the 8 and the 9 position, so if they can use those guys, they can go up the middle, try to muck this one down a little bit, and if they do, then uh, Brown might find themselves a little bit in trouble. As the sun starts to come out here in beautiful Providence, Rhode Island, a clearing kick from the Rams. This will be a line-out for Brown just inside the Fordham half. Early line-out for these guys. We'll see what the decision is. They have a lot of opportunities to attack here. Coach Laflamme keeping an eye on things here. Very passionate coach and one of the great recruiting coaches in American rugby these days, Dave Laflamme. We're going to get a good look at this line out here, John. Joe Alhasso from Reading, England, wearing the number two to put this one in. A little decoy there, but uncontested line out didn't go straight. Fordham is going to have a chance for a scrum or a line out. A little miscue there from Joe Alhasso, the freshman. 
played at the Wellington College. Well, and, and what we saw happen there was that they were they were running the decoy to try and see what the Fordham defensive alignment was going to be. And when that happens, you really need to have the guy who's on the second jump. They need to be able to lift him, and he needs to go up straight as an arrow. The problem is when they start pitter pattering the feet is you've got to be careful watching where the Fordham guys are going. You've got to watch what you're doing still. A little bit of a fundamental breakdown, a little bit. One thing that I've liked so far, John, on the scrum here is what you're going to see Fordham do is you're going to hear them with that chant to move in unison. I really like that they do that, and you're going to see how they push. It's created a lot of surge on the first couple ones we've seen. Ray gets the ball in. You do hear that heave call, as Dan's pointed out to you. The ball is out into White's hands. A little wrap around there. Again, just pulled away by Brown. Tremendous work there by that man, Zeller from where a mass, he's been doing a lot of work, and now a little kick around the corner. They've got weapons coming from everywhere. Can he get a hold of it? He's knocked it forward with his body. Don't see a knock on there. Referee spots it, and it's a second try. Over an opportunist moment there. Brown University up by 10 over the Fordham Rams here at Marvel Field. What a great and opportunist bit of work. First 10 minutes have gone Brown's way. Things are breaking their way, and I think the big part of that is because you're seeing the collisions and things start to break their way. We mentioned the fact that Fordham plays a very heavy style, that Fordham comes in very strong and very hard with their big physical presence inside. In the, I keep bringing up the second row, in the center, in those center spots. Brown's wings are substantially faster than what Fordham's going. So when you have those collisions, you're able to get those passes outside. Full head of steam, you're able to get it to either your fullback, your left wing, flanker style. They're up, they're pushing, and they're able to get some, some breakaway. And when they have that breakaway, able to touch it down, get some points on the board. And that was number seven, Santiago Cortabaria, excuse me, from uh, Miami, Florida. A, uh, one of the t twin brothers on this team. Both it, freshmen playing at the number seven was awarded that try. I was going to say, you, would, you wouldn't think that, that a number seven or, or a number eight necessarily is going to have that type of speed, but that's where Brown's playing. Very different style, getting a lot of guys out. They're saying, we're, we're not trying to run through you, but we sure as heck can if we're running around you. And that was just a good opportunist try there from that number seven. You're right, he's got speed. He's a little shorter than some of their other back rows. Yeah. They were a pretty big set of players there. He's only 5'11". And yep. down 10 points now, Fordham Rams. I mean, I'm looking down this back line here off the kick here for Brown, and, and I'm seeing, you know, I mean, ob obviously you're, you're 12, you're, you're 13, you're 14, you're 15. They're going to be fast guys, but you're looking at 7, 8, 9, and those are guys who can take tries. Those are guys who can spread things out. Those are guys, and obviously your guys up front are still going to have a little more beef to them. Ball going to come from Thompson again here, the sophomore. At a club Newman in Argentina before moving to the States. Ball down and well taken there. Quick hit. Nice high contest for that ball. Looks like we're going to have a, a kick coming in from the back there. La, La Sanur, sorry, I might have mispronounced his name. Uh, Lansanur gets that one away. Lance and Noor are going to be very effective in this game, but ball currently being taken in there by Santiago Thompson. Put in the kickoff, stayed in the back. Coming back, looks like we have a quick pod coming off the right-hand side here for the Rams. Rams looking to find some space. We'll see where they decide to go. They have some big boys out there to run. Ball goes up to one of those big boys. Griffinetti, graduate masters in tax student. Now a little chip over the top trying to spot that space. Well marshaled and taken into the hands of Hudson Lee. Hudson Lee gets it to Lansanur. Lansanur into contact. Ball quickly to a pot of forwards out there on the right-hand side. Big number three, Daniel Archer. Penalty coming against the Rams unless something happens here for Brown. Brown, free play, kicks it in behind, has some space. If this gets picked up, we'll whistle and come back for the penalty. Big Daniel Archer with a good run there. 5'11", 215, junior out of Johannesburg. Seems like there was a little miscommunication on the uh, on the Brown end. I was I was looking out a, after the kick was taken and did not seem like they were either lining up the way that they anticipated to or, or, or the, the guys that were lined up on the right just weren't, didn't seem like they were in full sync on that. Little miscue there from Brown. They wanted to get the lineup further down. But the uh, kick doesn't go, but 
Fordham has to return it. And it's going to be a line out here for the Brown Bears just inside the 40 meter line. They spent most of the time in this first half so far, Dan, down in this Ram zone. Yeah, we haven't seen Fordham get a whole lot of movement. And part of that is because of, of, of what they've chosen to do, which is keep things kind of inside the box, if you will. Uh, they haven't. They, I would like to see Fordham maybe start to pass things outside a little bit more, maybe run a couple of set plays in motion. They haven't done that. And since they have it to this point, uh, Browns maybe really dictate the pace of play. Coming up on about 15 minutes in here. Ball to the front. Little deception, and that one gets in. They've got a set of forwards out here to run if they want. Little wrap around. They're looking to go wide. Was it too slow? Maybe not. The ball is in the hands of Hudson Lee. Hudson Lee has some runners with him. Tries to force that pass. It doesn't go and rolls right into touch. Probably should have just held on to that one, Hudson Lee. Yeah, it's so hard when you're when you're running with the ball and, and you've got possession that you just want to keep momentum going. And sometimes your 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 body and your emotions take over in an emotional sport. You just don't have the same. Oh, what do I do with this? Ah, we'll pass it. We'll keep it going. Sometimes it's better to take the tackle, restart the play. You have the whole left side to work with. You can restart, go back around the other way. Instead, you have kind of a sloppy pass there too. And and again, that's just because everyone's in full sprint. So you're trying to, to get a pass off and try to hit that play, hit that big play, hit that explosive. And when you're not able to do that, it, it obviously causes a, causes a turnover here. Just inside their own 22, Marais feeds it. Has White behind him. They're gonna break it off the back there with Kiernan Rogers. Chaminade High School graduate. And once again, ripped away in the contact. Brown, very effective around that breakdown right now. Really just honing in on that ball. I'm doing a good job of it. Tip pass slightly mistaken there from one of the Brown players. Better to just comment and settle it down. They had to go through a couple of phases and put another try in, but it's going to be a scrum here for Fordham. Yeah, Ollie Corbett that time just tapped it over instead of setting himself for the pass, and that's by design. Uh, that, that's the way you want to do it because you want to try to hit the wing and and let them fly up the yep. uh, up the side. But in any event, it becomes a it becomes a forward touch. So you know they'll uh, yeah we'll turn it over here for a scrum. Ooh, I had Ali Corbett. I'd mixed up him and Mitchell for a second there. We had a number change just before the game. Diamond Dan Rubin letting me know that. Uh, that shot was, in the that dark. I'm doing. <laughs> that was a shot in the dark. Ball goes I had down a 50, in the scrum. He's going to pick it up. I'm a scrum here for Fordham. Coach Reinhardt and Foden looking on. Andrew Giraldi. director of rugby over there at Fordham. He has done a lot for rugby in the Met New York area and the East Coast. Big, big involvement with the Liberty Conference. And, and that's really understated when you have the Liberty Conference and you have what Fordham's been able to do there. I mean, they are, uh, they're putting together something pretty special on campus in the Bronx. And yeah, I think that when you, when, you look at some of these, when you look at some of these Northeast teams uh, that have history or, or is able to come in and generate their own history in their own right, I mean, it's some pretty special things that, that they can do. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I, was, I saw some Liberty players yesterday. Iona playing uh, Colgate I got to do. I mean, that Liberty Conference, New York itself, I mean, it's an interesting league because, you know, you, you can go, and I know the Liberty League itself, when you go down into Division Two or Division Three, you know, you can encompass out to Rochester and, and up into that area. I know in lacrosse that league is so deep just because of the schools and the nature of the schools. Same idea with the Liberty Conference in, in rugby. I mean, you've got a lot of schools in there that are just so deep and, and so deep in their own traditions. Big squeeze by Brown, but a good scrum. Take it out from the back there by Fordham. They elect to just kick it on, take a little territory. It's going to be Brown ball, but they're going to be inside of their own half for the first time in a little bit. And it will be a Brown line out here. Referee Barrio showing him where he wants the center of that line out to be. Tell you what, we're about halfway through this first half. It does not feel that way. This game has been There's fast, been high Both energy. These teams came to play and run. Yeah. This, is, this is the fun stuff right here. Everybody wants to play. Ball out. Montsenur gets it away. A little shimmy, a little shake. One of the backs gets through here. They've got some runners reassembling, looking for their pattern. Ball comes out from Hudson Lee. Hudson Lee puts a ball in there to that man, Matt Mitchell. Ball back to Lansenur. He's going to look at some space here. Doesn't find a roll into touch, but gets it in the hands of some of these Fordham players. Big, strong run coming here from the Rams. And this is a long distance dedication to his own team. Takes it down there. Does he have the players coming with him? Players piling over that, trying to rewind that ball. We'll see who comes up with it. 
Referee Barrio on the spot. Attacking position here for the Rams. They haven't had a lot of them. Let's see if they can take advantage. Ball goes up. Nice work. It's into that man's hands. The beautiful flow head of hair on the big number 13, Patrick Stack. Now they go for the kick inside the 22. We're going to go back here for a penalty. There's a free play to the Rams on an offsides against Brown. So we'll come back here for a penalty. That's Take what... That's what I was looking for out of Fordham. I was waiting for them to open up something like that. I was waiting for just hit the outside, you hit the blind side on that, and just go upfield on a run. When you get someone in the open field and he can hit full, full steam, full head of steam, uh, I think that might have been Andrew White there, number 10. He just he caught the ball and, and was in stride. It's so beautiful when you see that because you know that he's got the vision before he even catches the ball to know where to go. I know where I'm going to cut. I know that I'm going to get someone to over-pursue at this moment. And when he does, I can stop and turn on a dime. And then he knows I can pass back. And once you have that, yeah, the tackle came, but that was what we've been waiting on for Fordham to set up inside the 22 and maybe get something going here. Fordham elects to go for the lineout. They want the points. They came to play. Not to have a goal kicking duel, but held up well by Brown. Started moving again. It stopped once. They're going to have to do something with it. Great Ball surge. Scrum have his hands. Here goes the million dollar mullet. Stack takes it in. They're going to move it out. Looking for someone to get to. Good rush defense as Andrew White is stranded on an island there. Can Fordham recycle this ball? Have done, and they got one of their players barreling through the middle. Referee has spotted another offsides penalty against Brown. We'll come back for a penalty for Fordham once again. Seems like deja vu. Yeah, White did a great job there churning the legs and keeping things going. And, and again, this is what we've been waiting to see out of Fordham. How do they attack? What's their formation? How are they going to choose to do that? You're seeing right now how they're lining up that they're kind of uh, crescent mooned almost so they can get this kick for the line out and when you look at what they were able to do when you're starting in the center like that you've got options you can turn to your left you can turn to your right you know you don't have as much room on the right jump but if you could turn to the left and, and maybe just arrange it so that after that next tackle you can go back to the right you're always trying to see three four plays ahead and that's what Fordham's been doing here over the last maybe two to three minutes and that's what's got them knocking on the door here for some points and we will they come down with this. I would imagine we're going to go back to another mall here. As they go to the front, looking for the safety. Ball's tipped around, a little sloppy. What can they do with it? They get it back out to White. White looks at the runner there. Stack again. Stack. Good high school program he came from. Is going to run that ball forward. Ball caught in the middle there, a little messy. They're able to get it back up as they move it out there. That's Eamon Tierney. Tierney. Just about... 16, 17 meters out from the line. Turned over quickly by Brown there. Another turnover and another key moment by this Brown team. And that is that man, William Zeller, the junior. Doing incredibly well there. Wide pass through the hands of somebody, but we're going back here for a penalty against Fordham. Fordham's had, a, had someone down for the better part of the last maybe 30 or 40 seconds, too. That must have been a forward pass there that went out to the, the, the wing, to the big number five. At uh, Ali Corbett, it uh, thought an advantage was on there, but they're going to bring it back for the penalty, so they must have thrown a little bit forward. We'll take a look at this uh, Fordham player. We'll hope he is okay. Yeah, John Lally had been down behind the play a bit and had to had to kind of just, uh, you know, luckily the play stayed off to the left, so we were able to continue the play while he was down. And, and because Fordham also was looking to their left, you know, it, we were able to keep the play away from him while he was down. The trainer was already ready to go, so we get that stoppage. They'll help him up. Check him out, give him the old five-point inspection. But you're absolutely right, though, with Brown, with what they were doing there. That was, you know, it's intriguing. It is very intriguing to watch when you see a team line up like that to do something like that. They can get the ball to the wing pretty yeah. quick. Dan might be about to catch a ball as Lunson Newer gets one out here. Had it the whole way. <laughs> the whole way. Ball headed towards the booth here, but we're going to have a Brown line out. Joe Alhasso, six foot two oh five. One of the many freshmen on this team. Brown go to the front. Well taken there. Ball is in Lonsonur's hands. Lonsonur gets it into a waiting crash pod. That crash pod goes over. Getting some people sorted out here as they go to the right. That's your man there. 
Hudson Lee. Hudson Lee acts as first receiver, but ball gets to the wing. Little slip, advantage for a knock-on. And the referee is going to say nothing gain. He's going to come back, and we're going to have a knock-on here. It's going to be a scrum for the Fordham Rams. But that Brown, if they can just convert that last pass a couple of times, then it'll slip through a little bit. They really got some game breakers out on the width there. Yeah, and that's the whole game plan is to get it out wide. That's what we've seen over the first uh, first part of this first half. And at this point, we know that's what Brown's trying to do. And I'm curious to see how Fordham's going to try and defend that because Fordham has shown that they have a little bit of a soft spot on that side and on the outside especially. So if you're Brown and you're trying to get out there, they've been trying to do that every single time. They've always just missed on those passes, that last pass that they need to. Curious if Fordham is trying to break up the pass or break up the play and wait for the tackle. It's super interesting to see how they're how they're digging on it. Yeah, it's hard. The structure of Brown makes it a little tough to figure out where they're going to go. Yeah. They're able to move the ball pretty quickly there. They do a good job of that, but it's going to be a big scrum penalty, huge push from Brown. Sometimes in those scrums, Dan, the stronger team just wins the penalty. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot you can do on that, and 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 that's and that's going to be Fordham's game. We saw from Fordham's side of it the fact that they were way more deliberate coming downfield. They were pushing they were they were using their strategy they were using you know line outs and scrums and they were they were just using the right plays to push brown back they just couldn't get in you know when we're looking at something like that brown has to try to almost avoid those plays now because they're going to find themselves in trouble against a bigger stronger side coming up on about 14 minutes or so left here in the first half as both teams wait on the field for one of those oval things they play the sport with, otherwise known as a rugby ball. A rugby ball appears eventually. We're going to have a line out here inside of the Fordham 40-meter line. Brown attacking position here. They have numbers stacked across the back line. We'll see where they decide to go with this. First, they convert the line out, do it well. They've got some runners. This seems to be one of their setup moves, but a little move back in there, and what a beautiful break open of the defense there. Just couldn't wriggle away from the tackle, but lots of Noor. He's there, and he's ready to go. Zeller gets it out of the wing. Here is the big man, Pablo Lavia. Pablo Lavia, the junior from Madrid, a business entrepreneurship major. Takes it in, good work there. Penalty against Fordham for trying to slow down that ruck. Probably a, a wise choice there on their part, but penalty against them, and we'll see what Brown decides to do as Lansenor has a conversation and puts it right towards the try line. Great opportunity here for driving mall, move something out to the back. We'll see what bag of tricks Brown University has. Yeah, Brown has everything in the uh, in the uh, the toolbox handy, especially given the way that 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 drive went. I mean, they did a really good job, and now we're seeing what Brown could do when you take the tackle. This whole thing was started because they took the tackle instead of trying to make the pass, got Fordham caught, and uh, well, unfortunately they Not messed up the, the line out. Yeah. yeah, referee Barrio, that's too bad. Tight on those, but John, that's the point. I mean, that's what you're trying to do. You've got everything in your toolbox at this point, so don't try to run it forward too much. You're able to stop, restart with that mall, move it forward, and and see what you can do. You wind up with a line out here, but with this line out and restarting it again call your play make your plays happen and know who you're going to once you retain possession here fordham contested line out but they get it in the back there being driven backwards they're probably going to have to move this little bobble of the ball back there from their fullback what's going to happen with that kick it could be anybody's ball Will the touch line beat it? It does. Referee is going to come back here, however, for an offsides against Brown. But that was, you know, it was illegal, but it was a ton of pressure they put on uh, Santiago Thompson. Is there anything better than watching a number eight jump over everybody and try <laughs> to just smack the ball? Like, is there anything better than that? He seems there. to be enjoying himself, certainly. Yeah. Fordham penalty. Another lucky fan takes on a ball, but we're going to have a line out here for Fordham just inside their own 40-meter line. Ball in here for the Rams. Chris Johnson from Brooklyn, Fordham Prep to Fordham University. Now playing hooker here. Big wrestling match coming on. That may get dragged in a touch, and it does. Referee spots it. Great job by Brown. Amazing, amazing work there by the big number five, Ollie Corbett. 
Yeah, he he grabbed that tackle, and when he let, when he grabbed on, he used those arms, had full wrap up. He wasn't letting go. Oh, that was just a beautiful play. Beautiful play. Corbett has had the New England Free Jacks under 23 experience. The Free Jacks of Major League Rugby team. Little wrap around from Lots of New and that space is open. And no res no reserve about taking it goes Zeller. Zeller playing well out there, but again, a little knock on creeps into those wider channels for Brown. And it's going to be a scrum here for Fordham, but we have a player down. Uh, what happened with, with Zeller there was he was running and then he got tackled and when they tackled him, they punched the ball down and then Fordham makes the decision to kick it forward and just kind of kick it out, move it around. Brown started chasing after it. They get, they're going to get called for the knock on there largely because you have that kick, you have guys going in all different directions, his body's colliding, it hits you, you knock it on and and, and you know that's that's what winds up happening, but I'll give Zeller credit. I like the speed. I, I, you know, you see a guy wearing number yeah. twelve. You know he's going to have a little. Bit, yeah, you know he's going to be a good gunner. You know he's going to have the speed. But man, when he gets that second gear, he is gone. And just the way their movements are going, they're just opening up that space for him. You know, it was a wide open door in front of him. As I said, he did not need any invitation to go through it. And there's no. I mean, there's no secret. There's no. I mean, it's 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 a simple game plan. Yeah. Let's get it to the outside and let the guys run. And Brown's been effective at it. And, and when you're looking at the three, four guys who are lined up on the outside, Fordham just cannot get out there fast enough. And they're just letting these players play. But we're going to take a little more time here for this uh, player. So we'll just hang on for a second. We'll let the medical staff do their work. Turned out to be a pretty nice afternoon out here. Yeah, uh, the sun, sun breaking down. down. Yeah. Working on my uh, mid-September tan. The thing is with the mid-September tan is if you haven't had one all year, this is the worst time of year to get the burn <laughs> if you're like me. I've been stuck inside. I have a five-month-old. I never get outside anymore. I've been inside. I'm going to get that sunburn down. I'm going to be like, it's going to be September, early October. I'm going to be bathing in aloe. We are still 12 to nil. If you have just joined us, Brown over Fordham here at Marvel Field. Back from the injury, everybody seems to be okay. We're gonna have a scrum here for Fordham. Inside around their own 22, where they have been for quite a bit of this game. They have had some productive times down in the brown part of the field. About eight minutes or so left here in the first half. I would imagine we're gonna get some injury time there, added time Probably at yeah. the end of the, at we'll the, end of the half. I wanna get uh, referee Barrio's personal time. Ball in there, hands on it is the number eight. He knows he needs to secure that, and it does a good job. Just Kieran Rogers. Penalty advantage against Brown again. Brown leading on the scoreboard, also leading big time on the penalty count. Little attempt at a kick over there. Nothing happening. We're going to come back for that penalty. Well, last seven minutes, given the pace of this first half, John, we're starting to see it take its toll on the guys in the middle, those Fordham guys who are bigger, having to chase after the Brown Wings. We're starting to see the threes, the second row, those guys starting to not – I'm not using the term breakdown, but we're starting to see them a little more hands on the hips when they're getting up. They're a little bit slower, go to a knee first and then get up. See how that affects Fordham here because maybe the last, I want to say, 10 minutes has largely been spent with Brown on the attack and Brown holding possession. Yeah, Only make, really the one Fordham. No defense. Yeah. It tires you down. But here we have a line out for Fordham just inside Brown territory. Brown's defense setting up as the decision makers on Fordham deciding where they want to go with it. Some conversations there from Andrew White. From Shrewsbury, New Jersey, Christian Brothers Academy graduate and rugby player there. And White has the ball now, looking for a runner. Gets it to that man there, Stack. Stack moves it out. One of their other playmakers there. Nice tackle. Fordham looking for a lift tackle there, but it didn't look like they're going to nothing penalized. Fordham nowhere to really go. Have to put the ball up to one of the big units, and that's Palio Rodriguez, the Madrid, Spain-born finance major, played at Greenwich High School, but turnover again by Brown. Just doing amazing work, and a sailing forward pass there. Gives it back to the Fordham Rams, possibly in a good position here. Brown's going to have to reassemble their defense pretty quickly, and off they go. A little chip across the back for Lana Seward to run back on, and he's going to let that one roll on a touch. It'll be Brown ball, but inside their 22, 
you go back to that tackle and 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 that's one of those that's on the edge like you want you want to see guys playing if you're if you're a rugby team you want guys playing on the edge you don't want them playing over the edge i feel like i, I hear too many coaches talk about that when they're amassing penalties or taking too many penalties so you get a tackle like that and fordham's going to look around looking for looking for a penalty on that but you're not going to get it and, and that's what you want to have happen because you want to try to make a play and have that play every now and then you don't want to do it too often you want to have one of those plays though get the other team get your opponent mentally a little bit off kilter a little bit off center they'll look around and that provides you a little bit of an opportunity brown setting up in the middle of the field here running from their own line probably just going to try to find a little room here for a kick they do have some runners out wide if they can get the ball there but long Lansanur has other ideas and rolls that one out just over the 40 meter line as time winds down in this first half. We're gonna have another line out here for Fordham. And really possession territory this first half has been in the favor of Brown. They got 12 yeah. points on the board. Fordham hasn't scored yet, but it is a, uh, a certainly gone their way in the first half. I'm what? sure Fordham's gonna wanna change their luck in the second. Yeah, well, one of the things that we always say about like, well, the defense looks great, but we've seen a lot and we've <laughs> seen a lot of them, which is not something you wanna say or you wanna be hearing if you're Fordham. Like you don't wanna hear us saying, Boy, the defense looks great. We've seen them a lot. You want to be able for us to say, yeah, they look great on the one or two times we've seen them. That time of lineup move from Brown doesn't yield that much. Some little hands off there. Here comes Brown. They got some runners out to the right-hand side here if they can get the ball out quickly enough. It has slowed down a little bit, so they come back to Lansanur. Lansanur hoists one up about 40 meters out. Taken down there by... Fordham, but the runner was in front of his own 22, so the ball goes directly out, and the ball comes back to where it was kicked for a line out. And, and one of the other things you're four. seeing down the last four minutes here, John, is just, again, the fatigue taking its whole yeah, toll. Pardon me, it bounced out, I suppose. Oh, nope, the referee and the assistant referee having a little conversation there, so referee Barrio going to make the right call. I don't just mean that because I called it, but uh, referee brings it back. It's going to be a late first half line out here for Brown just at halfway. We're always right. <laughs> we are always right. I have never had a call that I have ever disagreed with an official where I have eventually said I, I was wrong. I am always right whenever I'm calling it. They might be on top of the play. We might be on the other side of the field. They might be on top of the play. We may be ground level or up. We're always right. Ball up. Has to be tapped back there, forced back in Lansanur, but he's got some runners. He'll be all right. They've got that width if they want it, and they can find it. And Hudson Lee gives it up to La Villa. La Villa, what can he make happen? He is a big unit. He gets it back to Hudson Lee. Hudson Lee, he is silky in his moves, but that pass just went a little forward from La Villa. Again, marginal, but we're going to come back here. It should be a scrum pointed the other way, I think. That's the first time today, by the way, we've seen a pass go that far across the line. That was uh, that was that was picture perfect and hit Lee in stride. And then credit Brown for being able to turn back. I mean, you're going to the right. Normally, you get you hit the 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 right wing. You hit the wing all the way on the right. And they're saying, no, I'm just either going to try and throw it to one guy or, or go down. And Brown, after that pass from Lee, was able to turn back. And they had perfect formation going downfield. Very well drilled team here. Coach Laflamme, with the help of uh, Eddie O'Sullivan for a few weeks. Legendary coach. Fordham with Jamie Marais. Get the ball back there. Good squeeze coming on from Brown. Good pressure. Where are they going to go? Stack comes as a dummy runner. They want to get the ball out to number 15, Santiago Thompson, the sophomore. Thompson brings it in, waiting Brown defenders there. Can't turn it over that time. Stack has to step into the first receiver spot. Big boy, number three, Jack McBriarty. Another Greenwich High School product. Take that one, ball up in the air. Well, via hit in the air, but offsides previously. We're going to come back. Might be able to hear Eddie O'Sullivan through my microphone, screaming for foul play there, taking LaVia in the air. But they're going to go quickly. Marais, they're not going to waste any time. Discussing things is Fordham. They're going to kick it to that side of the field as they're looking to put some points on the board before this half ends. But Brown, well taken. Brown, 50 meters out. Playing a little hot potato here. 
Little offloads coming through, doesn't work. Ball gets pushed around. And referee Barrio calls us for the end of the first half here at Marlboro Field, 12 to nil on two tries and a conversion from the Brown Bears. Excellent, excellent half. Dan, final thoughts before we take a break? Oh, uh, this is an exciting half. You saw the team starting to get a little fatigued at the end and start to get a little bit sloppy and frustrated. I'm sure the break here will do them good. I'm looking forward to an exciting second half, see what happens down the stretch. John Broker with Dan Rubin. We're gonna be back for second half action here as the Brown Bears are leading leading the Rams of Fordham 12 to 7. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Marble Field. The Brown Bears lead 12 to nothing over the Fordham Rams wearing white from left to right on your screen. Going to be kicking off here with a little room to make up. Referee Barrio gets us underway. Brown in the brown and gray stripes about to receive the ball. Big high kip from the fullback. Comes down into Zeller's hands. Zeller quickly moves it across and a massive handoff there. Big bump off happens, ball back in their hands pretty quick. They're looking for a couple of people there. It looks like Zeller is gonna take that one off the left boot and Zeller puts a high one up in the sun for Fordham to deal with. We're gonna come back here for a penalty against Fordham, early penalty. John Broker here at Marble Field in Providence with Dan Rubin. Dan, message from a coach in Fordham at halftime. What do you think? Don't blame the camera guy for anything that you see <laughs> on this. I apologize. I'm pulling like triple duty over here, so I apologize, and I think I might have kicked out a leg on this, but we'll get through this, folks. John's going to be carrying you through the rest of the way. If I'm Fordham right now, John, I am going to just say one thing, and that is got to get some points on the board. They've done everything but score. They haven't had great offensive possessions, but it sure would be nice to see them get something up on the board quick here. Brown puts it outside their 40-meter line with a nice kick on the penalty there, and... We wait for a little technical difficulty to get sorted here. We're not sure exactly what's happened. It's going to be a line out. Line out here for Brown. Going into the middle, but gets tapped back. A little bit messy. Not a way you want to start at the half in the set pieces. Ball into a waiting set of forwards there. Big number two takes it initially, does Johnson, and forces it on to one of his teammates there as they continue to keep those forward pods moving, goes to the big number eight, Tierney, but spilled. Still retain possession, Brown. Looking around to see which way to run, and they've decided to go the direct route with the forwards, Dan, it looks like the beginning of the second half. They want yep. to try to soften up this Brown team. Yep, use that size, which is exactly what they did in the first half to varying degrees of success, but you know, Ford, I'm going to try and, and go straight at Brown again and see what they can do uh, with their size and strength. As and like there's that little miscue as the replacement scrum half comes in. It's Dylan Lewis and Brown back in the attack. Ball flips through. Still Brown possession here. But a whistle and a penalty against Fordham for a scrum infraction there. Just three or four minutes into this Second half of action here in Marvel Field. Another penalty for Brown. Get to push it downfield a little bit. Lots of Noor so important so far in this game. And we're going to have another Brown line out in the only shady spot now that the Suns come out on this Marvel Field. And good attacking opportunity here, Dan. Yeah, good opportunity here for Brown uh, or, or to have so, to get some more points. I think one or two more scores, they'll feel a little bit more comfortable than the way they did going into the half. Fordham, uh, of course, needs to prevent that, I mean, for obvious reasons. But so far, you can feel uh, momentum shift a bit for Brown. Brown went a little too tricky in the last line out. They're going to go up to the front this time, but bounces off the back. And that replacement there, that man Dylan Lewis from Rye, New York, Feeds it out and bashes in through the centers. Powerful tackles coming in from Fordham. I think the message was clear from Coach Reinhardt. They needed to lay the lumber, and they've been doing that. But Brown still moving that ball pretty well. Very crisp in some of these movements. Ball out there to Lonson Noor. He puts it into one of the big boys' hands. They're just trying to draw on some defenders here. Get quick ball. They do. Lonson Noor gets a little bit of a bad pass. But again, another offsides here against Fordham. And we're going to have... Moving downfield by pass or by penalty are the Brown Bears, and they have a penalty inside the 22. Hey, sometimes that's all you need to have happen, right, is have that one break go your way, make the other team make a mistake. 
And into the trees it goes. It's the right idea. We have a line out here. Brown not interested in extending the points lead. They'd rather play some rugby here before they get into the main part of their Ivy League season. Brown, of course, playing against his Liberty Conference here in a cross-conference matchup. Calls and numbers coming in. Let's see what kind of dance moves happen on this one. Five-man line out. They're just trying to go simple here, but again, miscued, but winds up in the hands of one of these Brown Bears players off a knockback from Fordham, and they're happy to run, and here's a big unit. Bashes his way in there. Ball out into the hands here. That's a man, Hudson Lee. Hudson Lee has Zeller. Zeller has the line in front of him, and Zeller gets the ball ripped out of his hands. Pickpocketed right there at the very end, Dan Rubin. What a defensive play to stop a guaranteed Zeller try. Yeah, that would have been a whole lot of frustration for Fordham that you know Zeller would have been able to score. We saw him do something similar earlier today. So you know you make that same type of play, it winds up coming back and and doing something again that that we've seen work. So credit uh, Fordham for getting that stop. It's a goal line dropout. One of the new rules this year is that uh, if ball basically gets turned over inside your own try zone, you get a goal line dropout instead of some of the things they've done before and 22 dropouts or uh, scrums. But here comes Hudson Lee, finally taken down by a blade of grass as he scurries his way across the field. Ball out to Zeller. Zeller nearly throws the intercept, but here comes one of the big, hard charging brown forwards. Going to have to get himself to the ground there. Fordham trying to hold them up, have done. They've got huge numbers out wide here if they want to go with it. They decide to keep it inside there, and that's Ali Corbin putting in that little pass, and they're inside the 22, but near turnover there. And yet another penalty against Fordham as a hard-charging and surging Brown team. Really, really making Fordham pay on any mistake. John, I'm not going to lie. This is the first time I've ever done camera and uh and broadcasting duties this is also the first time i think i've handled a camera in a couple years so uh <laughs> we, i'd uh, like to think i'm doing a good job at this i do apologize job, for following it, but uh, i'm sure everything's good i do apologize for the occasional we, you feel like you're on the side of a boat that's listing the uh everybody's okay with you dan <laughs> people are going to be watching this at home wondering when did the boat sink love the line out here from brown the Bears, a couple of last lineouts were a little choppy. They get down with that one safely, get the small going quickly, driving towards the line. The big boys always love to drive when he's over. It's a big statement of intent and power. They keep it going. Fordham players flailing everywhere, trying to stop this thing. Referee Barrio has a good look on it, but it's on the ground now. Goal line defense from the Rams. And driving towards the line they are, and try awarded. Yeah. Fordham in a power move. Takes their forwards, takes down the line out, drives it over. Five points to the good as this second half is well underway. Good power there, Dan Rubin. Yeah, I mean, you've got a mall like that. You're, you're just going for what you hope is going to be, you know, anything. Drive forward, drive forward, drive forward. Just stay up and, and continue to push. And that's exactly what Brown did and works to their advantage. They're, they're able to put some more points on the board and, Continue what's been a very, very good afternoon for the Brown Bears. We saw at the end of the first half, though, that, and this is something that I'm going to be paying attention for, is how the play was breaking down a little bit. Guys were getting hot. Guys were getting yep. tired, and, and things were breaking down. Uh, you know, this here in the, in the second half, you know, the sun coming out, the heat, I'm not sure that they've played in, in general, like, sunshine and heat, uh, you know, hot weather um, on this field, bright open sunshine. I'm curious how that will uh, that will creep in because the shadows are not coming for a few hours. Yeah, the reserve bench will be very important as Hudson Lee yeah. drives one, and he hits it. It is good. That is another two points. It is at 19 to nil to the Brown Bears in the second half of action here at Marvel Field. John Broker with Dan Rubin bringing you this one. Dan, the man on the color and the camera. <laughs> he can do one thing. He can do two things. He can do it all. And we are just about 10 minutes through this first half as Fordham look to get it going again. 
Santiago Thompson. We'll talk about him quite a bit. USA Rugby USA under 18 player. Puts a long one in inside the 22. Almost a little miscommunication there, but Brown's going to come away with this no problem. And bam, goes a big offensive hit there. Puts a player to the ground, and Brown from their own 22. Looks like they have a little uh, wind at their back then. They're really excited to play. Yeah, doing a great job, too, at that. And, and that's a big hit. That's a statement hit. And that's Hudson Brown Lee. Brown opens up. Little chip ahead. Let's see who it falls for. And it falls for Hudson Lee. What an individual piece of skill by Lee. Lee deserves this try. What work when he got a little bit of space there. Amazing individual effort. Hudson Lee, the international relations and philosophy major. Didn't play rugby before he got here, but certainly plays rugby now. And Hudson Lee touches down another five points on a long distance individual one on his own. Yeah, he earned some well face time on that, John. I love it when a guy kicks it, chases it down. He knows what he's, crack what he's cranking with speed on, and boy, he took care of business in a big way, and that's, that's a backbreaker if you're Fordham. That's, that is a tough that's one. That's a tough one Fordham. to come back from. That is a tough one. That's a long distance one. Hudson Lee ran more right there than I do in a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and it deserves that try wholeheartedly. Ben sure was happy. The referee actually is having a discussion with his assistant referees. So let's not uh, chalk this up quite yet. But nope, they seem happy. And Lonson Noor is going to have a pretty easy conversion with this one, able to score under the sticks. I always love when a guy at the end has the try all sealed up and he doesn't just put it down. Like that's a, you know, I'd be sitting there ready to celebrate, spike the ball, yeah. get all excited. Lines up for the easy points. Two extra added. We're at 26 to nil. Fordham Rams starting to have a bigger mountain to climb in front of them. Brown has some reserves they can roll in in the field. We're still just about 10 minutes going on this half. Plenty of rugby time left. Fordham. You see Thompson there really moving up quick. He wants to get this ball back in play. Thompson knows that there are great players on this Fordham team. He knows that they can cut this deficit and walk away before the rest of their Liberty season with something big. Puts in a shorter one there, right to the midfield. Brown spills it forward. The coach killer score a try, screw up the kickoff back here to Fordham, but a little slip of the hands there. Thompson gets that going well, but loses that one right there. Unlucky. But we're going to come back to that knock on by Brown. No advantage. Scrum here for Fordham. Opportunity to put some points on the board inside of the Brown zone. Scrum here for Fordham. Big squeeze from Brown. Ball comes squirting out, and Brown is going to be the recipient of this, but it's going to be a battle. And it's going to be a battle that Brown wins, and they've got the runners out here. Quickly spread into their offensive formation. Good work. And Lansanur puts it in the midfield. Knows he has somebody coming, but referee says it's forward. Another one just about tight on that line. Lansanur does not necessarily agree with the referee, but he's not going to win that one. One thing on, on those on those scrums, John, that you notice is, is when a team just jumps at the right moment and is able to get all the advantage. You see the fists in the ground, and you just go sliding back. And you just know there's no advantage there. Absolutely. As scrum coming for Fordham, almost in the exact place of the last one. Referee Barrio gets a set again. Drive there from Brown. Big power coming in, but able to get it away into the hands of Whites. He puts it back into Lonsonur. Lonsonur calls for a free kick there, but the referee doesn't. Well, the referee gives it to him now, but after he takes a nice one across the chops for his troubles. And a little uh, fair catch free kick there. Call it a mark here in rugby. 
and it's going to be a free kick for Brown. Fordham has to back off. We're Brown looking. They have loads of numbers out here, and there they go. Hudson Lee, he's already going 100 yards. Let's see what we got here. We have a little put away and decides to hang on to the ball. Is that Brown forward? Maybe should have dished it off to his wing there. Big number five, Corbett. Had dreams of doing a Hudson Lee and going 100 meters on his own. We have a penalty here against Fordham for not rolling away, and they're going to go quick, and here's another infraction. Loud blast of the whistle from referee Barrio. We may see a card here, just a little warning to the referee. And here he comes. You can hear the Fordham team now starting to get a little frustrated with lack of discipline, John. You can hear the communication. they got to be better about that. And their captain, Stack, gets a little discussion from the referee, tells his team it's time to calm down. Hopefully they'll listen to him. As a couple of substitutions come in here, Zeller's had a great game. He comes off the field. In for Zeller comes Antonio Trapp from Atlanta, Georgia. Lansenur has a chance to put this one in a touch. He's missed a couple, a little over anxious, but he's going to make this one. I'm sure that was a little conversation from Coach Laflamme. As a ball rolls out of bounds, we're going to have a line out here for Brown who lead 26 to nothing over the Fordham Rams here at Marble Field. And one of the things on these lineouts too is just the way Brown has gone into, like I always say, going to their toolbox, right, John? They're, they're going in and they're coming up with different plays. I know you mentioned calling out the numbers and letters, but each time they've done something completely different. Who goes back? Who goes to the middle? And right there's another one. A little lineout trouble for them there. Ball didn't quite go to hand, but they have big Daniel Archer from Johannesburg to take that one in and get it set up. Nice little show and go from Alhasso there. Alhasso, a freshman. Ball out to Lansenor. Ball out into this middle of the field. Another runner hits one of those holes with absolute lightning. Making ground are the Brown Bears. Ball out here. Fordham player well over that, but taken off. They still have runners wide if they want them. Let's see if they can get the ball out there. A little pop over the top. A little hand back in as Duncan Grant from Brookline, Mass. Belmont High School grad takes that one in off the wing. And the replacement scrum half there, Dylan Lewis. Feeds it into one of his forwards. They're moving across the field. They've got some width here that they're going to go to. Lansenur gets to a big side of forwards. A little wrap around from Lansenur. Stack is it. Stopping up something out there on defense, but a big run here from Brown, and they're headed towards the corner, and Brown just about five meters out from this Fordham line. We've got a couple of Fordham players down on this side of the field, so they're going to be playing too short for the moment. Play will continue unless it comes back near these injured players. Let's see what they decide to do. Ball comes wide. It's a little bit too close to them. Referee might have to call this off, but they're going to keep coming around, and they've got a couple of balls out here, and now towards the try zone and into the try zone and head towards the center is Duncan Grant. Academic All-Ivy in 2019 and 2020. Dots down five points for the Brown Bears. And the Rams continue to get put to the sword by this Brown team. Brown using the whole field and doing a very nice job at it. I mean, they're just that's where you know that if you're on one side of the ball, you, you've got to go back to the other side. And uh, they just did a really nice job there in terms of, of finding the right left wing, finding the right person to pass the ball through that spot, and then exploiting a hole in the Fordham defense brought on by the fact there were players down. Um, I, I don't know if, if they if, – I would have assumed that they would have blown it dead there at that point, John, but play it, it, continues. It, yeah. it was around them. It wasn't it's through them. It's a ref discussion. Was, yeah. There was discretion here. It was discretionary. They had medical people on the field making sure they're okay. Yeah, and, and like I said, they went around them. They didn't yep. go through them. So – it's uh, it works out well for Brown, and and you know when you're when you're in that position, Fordham down a couple guys, you know that's that's one of those things where you don't want to be hurt, you don't want to have anyone be hurt, but if there's a hole brought on by that, you have to go after it. Absolutely. <sighs> Santiago Thompson been talking about him a lot. He is up there. Ready to go again. He wants something good for his team. And just about the 22, 23 minutes we have left in this half. A lot of work to do. Great coaching staff here at Fordham. They're going to want to go home with something good and some positives out of this. A win right now will be difficult. It'll be the comeback of the fall. But uh, certainly a good Fordham team. 
Put the ball down to Lavia, standing in the middle of the field. Lavia, he is going to show and just get past Stack a little bit. And ball coming out here. Here comes Brown. Brown. Little show and go for Brown. They have another player down here. It's a big tight head prop. Looks like he just caught a, a little errant finger in the eye, to be honest. Nothing in it, nothing on purpose. As Hudson Lee, the magic man, comes across here. Ball to Lansenor. Now they're going out wide again. They've got the runners, but the ball has slipped forward. It's an advantage here for Fordham. Fordham, chance the attack here. Taking some of the big units down the short side. Held up by Brown's defense. Ball slid back in there. There's a big power run. Fordham putting some phases together here. Their number three is all right and coming back in. Knock on, however, going to come back. No advantage. It's going to be a scrum to Fordham. It's just about 22 meters out. Got it coming up on about, what, like 15, 17 minutes or so? My math is right. <laughs> your, uh, your math is pretty good. You can find out uh, what we're looking at here. We got another change coming in. Yeah, we're about just about halfway through this first half. Yeah, and, and that so. and, and that's still plenty of time for Fordham to make some noise yep. and make a change in here. Uh, you know, they like I said, they they they're a team with a lot of pride, and, and what we've seen throughout is is that just that they will try to continue what they're doing. You know, you're down a few scores, try to keep yep. uh, keep your 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 good mojo on the field and and try some different things, make an adjustment, maybe put a couple faster guys out there and yep. and see what you can do. The speed has really killed them from Brown. The, the I mean, speed and Brown. And it, it, it's hard thing to say with speed of thought. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Brown has players across the field, and they have a couple of really smart playmakers out there who yes. are spotting, there's the space. There's the space. Let's move it yep. across to these guys. And they have players ready to react to it. So there's a good speed of thought about this Brown team. Great into chemistry. those areas. Great yep. chemistry. And, and, and when we talk about speed of thought, I mean, that goes back to, the, to what me and you were saying earlier about, I think, three, three plays ahead, you know, creativity. Mm -hmm. And that's something that that's something that, to a degree, is something you need to learn how to do, or you just have an instinct for. To another degree, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's you know, I'm trying to think what the right way to describe it is. You just can't teach a piece of that, but yeah, you can teach a piece of that. Natural ability a lot of these guys have. We're back to the game here after a little patch up for one of these players. They're tough young men, able to roll their way back into the game, and we have. Scrum here for Fordham. Seen a fair amount of this this half. Fordham getting the ball. Referee Barrio just going to slow us down for a sec. Make sure things are solid. <laughs> Referee going to bring that up again. He's going to get tired of this. Somebody has to be doing right. Somebody has to be doing something wrong. If that happens, Barrio, referee Barrio will let us know. Fordham. No major replacements for them yet. Looks like just V in court. Nice drive. A tight head taken away. A stolen scrum doesn't happen often. And off of the back here come Brown. They know which way to run. They've got those runners going wide again. Let's see what they decide to do. It was Antonio Estevez from Portugal who made that break from the number eight position. A little pop, a little slide there. And here comes Brown on the run, getting up to about the 40-meter line. A little slow ball that time from Dylan Lewis. Big pickup here. Brown just going to resettle, get themselves back into their right formations. They've got the numbers, but good rushing defense there from Fordham. Holds them up, not allowing them to do the work they want to do. But penalty against for players just diving right over, coming off their feet. Once you to come in and support that ruck, Dan, you need to keep your feet, keep your body up. And one of the Fordham players just went down. Goes back to that that whole fatigue starting to set in. Guys are normally able to keep themselves up there unless they, you know, lose their footing. But what we're seeing, I think, out of both of these teams, John, as the second half goes on, is just the, the toll it's taken. I mean, guys are dirty. Guys are hot. Guys are sweaty, which I know is part of the sport. I mean, yeah. that's what you train for. These guys are, are in great shape. But at the same time, you know, it, it does take its toll. Repeated, you know, hits, crap, you know, the crush, the malls, everything you can get yourself into on a rugby pitch here. Uh, 
You're running into it today. And I was incorrect there. It's a penalty against Fordham, so it's going to be a line out here to Brown, just outside their own 40 meter line. And they're going to go quick there off a quick line out, getting their runners back in place. They've got some good width here if they want to come. They put the ball down in the middle, but good rushing defense from Stack forces them back inside. Ball back out there. Hudson Lee throws a long one in there. The ball has made it. Stack coming around to make the tackle. And Stack with the magical mystery mullet takes him out of touch, into touch. Great work there by Stack, the captain, keeping this Fordham team going. It's going to be a line out here for the Rams with replacement Giancarlo Tarmina coming in from Namibia. Ball up into center there, and it is down into the hands of Fordham. Won that one. Get the ball out, got some runners. Get it by to the outside. That's a man Thompson. They've got it to the wing. Promising look here from this Fordham Rams team. It's been a while since they've been down here. High tackle advantage. Brown player just took him down, riding him down by the neck. So free play here to the Rams, or else they'll have the advantage, be able to go for the try down in the corner or take it quick. But they're going to want to keep playing here. They have some time. Referee Barrio right on the spot for that. And the Rams have some width out here if they can get it there. Ball up to the big unit. He turns around and moves it back out. Stack has it now. Stack finds a space, and there goes Stack. He's looking for the line. Stack not to be outdone. Big unit to Lefford, and the captain. And big man right there, Patrick Stack, five points on the board finally for this Fordham Rams team. Yeah, nice job to, to draw the attention up front there uh, by, by the number three there. He was trying, doing a really good job of of taking it in and, and taking the hit and, and getting rid of the ball at the last moment, getting it over to Stack, and Stack just takes it the rest of the way. And Stack and Fordham now, I mean, this, you know, they're pointless. They have their structure. They have the way they're yep. trying to play, and things aren't really going to hand. Stack took that ball and just said, you know what? My turn. I'm going to will this across yep. the line. My turn. And you, you need a guy like that. You need a guy that says, jump on my back for some points, and – and that's usually why he's named captain. That's usually why he's your captain. And I'm the only one of the two of us who's talked about his hair yet. <laughs> I said I was jealous. No, that's right. We I did mean, a little conversation at the beginning of the game. But, I'm jealous uh, about everyone's hair on this. I mean, you can, get, are good. you can give me mullet. You can give me hair buns. You can give me, you can give me whatever it takes. As long as it's coming in this natural color and it's not thin, you've got, a, you've got me beat. Stack try with a Thompson conversion. Seven points here. And we're at Marble Field. It's now 33 to 7. Brown over Fordham. As we are over halfway through this. Fifteen minutes to go in this game. Balls come down into Brown's hands off to that. <sighs> Big show and back in there. Brown going to keep this one going. Ball out there to one of the big second rows. That's Matt Mitchell. Mitchell takes it in. His second row partner, Corbett, right over him. Ball out to Lansenor. Lansenor takes another wrap around. He's got players on him. He's able to get away. What a pass. There's a bouncing ball out to the wing, and great play there. That is that fella, Antonio Trapp. Antonio Trapp, former football player here, public health major from Atlanta, Sandy Creek High School. Taken down, looks like it will be a line out here for Fordham. Fordham, replacement hooker to put this one in. And good effort by Brown there to squeeze it away. Brown ends up with it off a tap back from Fordham. They are knocking on the door again right outside the line. Here come the Bears. Where are they going to go? They've got some big numbers out there, and a ball spilled forward. Hard lock winds in Thompson's hands. Thompson scoots it out to Stack to try score. Stack puts it to the boot, gets it down halfway. Let's see what we can do here. 
Little shake around there from a replacement. Wearing number 15, that's William Evold from Seguin, Texas. In the game at fullback. That could be Jack Elliott actually coming in, replacement. There are a couple replacements going to be wearing the same number of jerseys here for Brown, so we apologize to anybody if we mispronounce some names or get somebody wrong. Out to the wing. And a whistle there for most likely an offsides penalty against Fordham. And we have a penalty here for Brown. They're going to decide to go quick. No surprise there because they have numbers out there. That's Corbett. Corbett puts it in the space. Big unit passes it around. And there's a pass. It's either Elliott. Ball back there to the replacement 15. Avell, but they can't hold on to it. But they're going to get the ball down eventually. And they've got some runners here where they can decide to go. They go into the centers there. There's JT Dyer. I haven't seen a ton of him today. Ball moves out to another guy wearing 13. So that could be Dyer, but we're going to come back around here and see how we do. But there is a try coming, and certain try scored. And Brown answers that try from Fordham with another one and push ahead in their lead to 38. Well, that makes the Brown seven. faithful here pretty happy with the way this day has gone. And, you know, given everything that, uh, that we've seen here today, they've played about as flawless as we might have expected. There's there certainly some things to work on. Uh, a lot of things uh, I think that the coaches see that they probably want to work on, but yeah. you know, on the scoreboard, that's, it's still going to at least make it pretty happy tonight. I know Coach Lafon pretty well, and, and Eddie O'Sullivan is a very world-renowned coach for being a very particular person, so I don't think oh, so is a never word gonna that's going to come out of either of their yeah. mouths. Never going to be happy. <laughs> but that's coaches. Always want these uh, young men to keep getting better, be better people, be better players. Here at this Ivy League institution in Providence. What's that? Parents will be happy. Parents should be happy. Grandparents will be happy. Everyone will be happy but the coaches. We'll go with that. Kick coming in here. And it is no good. So we are going to stay at 38 to 7. Change coming in here for Fordham. Eight minutes to go. Referee lets us all know. Low driving one into the middle of the field, La Via. Hard charging through one, finally tackled, stacking there, trying to rip the ball away. Fordham has done, but referee says has not done legally. We're going to go back here for a penalty against Fordham. So we'll say this, John, watching this one, I know we talked about the, uh, the, there is one thing that I will say about college rugby, and that is that the, you know, the American game, is uh, it's a very international sport. I know we, you and I have talked about the the growth of the game. As a, I'm not gonna lie. If I had, I have a camera, if that one's going over me, I, I'm not catching it. <laughs> yeah, that I'm was, lucky. Uh, I'm following that, things that right now. That ball just buzzed the tower. I got a but little, uh, took a couple hairs off. It's it's an international game. Yes, we're seeing the American rugby style start to become more prevalent. It's great to see most of these guys. If they were born in this country, they have family overseas. They grew up around the sport. Uh, you know, but it's great to see it, it just how these two teams are playing and, and develop, helping to develop what's become a growth sport in the United States. Absolutely. Playing very well. Good. Rugby's getting, I've been doing this a long time, is rugby's getting better and better and better. Yep. The skill level on display from both of these teams, Fordham's fantastic. They're yeah. a really good team, really skilled players, real spirited players. You know, they're not having the, the, the rub of the green today. You know, they're not getting the luck. But rugby, the quality of rugby is just continuing to improve in this country. And that's, that's a good thing for Major League Rugby for, you know, our international standing. Rub of the green, we send in this one to the Emer Emerald Isle. <laughs> We're, oh, that's, uh, you know, the player hasn't gotten on the field yet, but uh, they wanted to give a shout-out to uh, Mr. Horkan, Grandpa Horkan there in Donegal. Grandson hasn't gotten on the field yet, but we hear he's enjoying this game at home. Hey. like to send a fond farewell from Providence. I am uh, all about sending the, the rub of the green, <laughs> the luck, the international. Jeez, we might as well be calling this game from a, uh, from, from a county overseas at this point. 
Big squeeze as we're rolling on towards the end of the game here from Brown, but Fordham able to come away with it. Ball gets into the hands of Stack, the try scorer. Stack gets it out to Thompson. They've got it out to the wing here. Good run here. Can he make a big run from Sabelli? Sabelli taken down eventually by the Brown defense. Brown wants to keep it at one try for Fordham. Can they do so? Stack again just finds that space. Rumbles his way through, taken down by a Brown defender. And there is the replacement there. That's Matthew Viencourt from St. Ignatius High School. And holding it in, not releasing. Good pressure by Brown. And with time winding down and the game definitely in hand, Dan, they are not letting up on defense. They want to make a statement here. No, and one thing that was that was nice to see was the fact that the Brown bench also very much engaged in that. Everyone very much engaged in that stand. And uh, for them, that's a, that's a, this is a big stand for them. You know it's important to not give the coaches too much film. Another kick out there. Going to be a line out here for Brown. Time winding down. Shade kindly rolling over our broadcast position. There's about five minutes to go here in regular time. Brown, a little trickery, a little voice trick. They're going to come to the front here, but it's not going to work. It's going to wind up in the back. They'll take it down anyway. Well taken down by Brown. Lewis looking for a little run around the side here. He's alone. He's got a little pass back in. Lewis gets an offload away. Good little interplay here by these Brown Bears. That's Jack Elliott, the replacement for Bernersville, New Jersey. Took that one in previously. Brown still working about it. Here's Lewis. We're going to come back here for hands in that ruck. It's got to be all done by the feet. So it's going to be a penalty against Brown after some nice little interplay in a short lane there. Dan, they didn't much room. They made a lot out of it. Yeah, that, yeah no, I, I agree entirely. <laughs> Got to be coming down here on the final waning moments, I think. Yeah. Clock kept on the field for this one, which, uh, so, you know, we're listening for the, for the officials' time where we keep an unofficial clock up here, given what we can do with it. Brown still alert and aware here. Brown just defense, just eyeing up for him here, trying to figure out what they're going to do. The Rams. We're going to jump, but uh, referee Barry is going to bring us back. Just going to get this reset. Wants this to be nice and clean. Ball over the top, a little messy, bouncing back and forth. Comes down into the hands of Brown. Player's going to be able to get up and run, but I didn't think he was held there, Dan, but he's going to call the roll. Once you're tackled and held, you're supposed to release the ball, but I didn't think he was. Referee Barrio. Obviously, he has more say than I do there. Yeah, I agree with you. But uh, obviously, like you said, we're up here. But I agree with you. I don't think that was uh, – I think we saw it a little differently. Late line out here for the Rams. A little discussion amongst their forwards. They'd like to take another five-pointer away from this. And we're almost at regulation time here. We'll go into the referee's time. Ball down on the mall here. There's a brown player having to roll out of there, and he does. Referee has said everybody's free to come in defensively and offensively. Brown working their way forward. Or sorry, Rams working their way forward. Now the ball is out into the midfield. Stack again. Stack has a clear run for the line. Gets taken down. Great tackle there by Brown. Try saving tackle right at the end here. And penalty, it looks like, against, where do they score? Sorry, try awarded to Fordham there. I couldn't quite see what was going on from my vantage point. I couldn't Every see either. Who, yeah. Mess well, of bodies. I apologize to you. I'd love to get a little more exciting response to a try there from Fordham. But they put another five points on the board, get themselves a 12. 38 to 12 currently, 38 to 14. Referee says we have a little more time to play, checks his watch. So 38 to 14. Go, 
around. Thinking about one more try if they can get one. Coach Laflamme encouraging them on late in the game here. Hang the ball high into the Providence air. Referee is going to whistle here for a player, I believe, taking one of the Fordham players out of the air. It's going to be a Fordham penalty. Brown player is vocal on this one. They're going to go quick for them. They want to run. Heaving the ball out to the side there might not be the way to go. Player nearly in touch, but they're going to go the other way. Tackle as the Fordham player was into touch when he got a hold of that ball. Referee Barrio says, let's come back and play from here. This is where the original penalty happened. And to touch they go, they'll have a line out for them. Right under the watchful gaze of Federico Reinhardt, their great coach. Not a whole lot to add it down the stretch of this one. It is uh, yep. it's just kind of, I, I mean, we've had the last couple of tries there, John, but the, again, there, it just doesn't seem like a whole lot of flow the last yeah, couple minutes of this one. It's just gotten a little, eh. Yeah. You know, I think uh, Brown is waiting to, to end this one off, and Fordham just uh, looking to make something happen. We have another penalty coming, but that is going to be the end of our game on that knockdown there. I thought it was a penalty. It's 38-14. to 14. Brown over the Rams here at Marble Field. Fantastic game. Dan Rubin, any last thoughts? No, it was a good game for Brown. A lot to work on for both of these teams, but nevertheless, like I said, top of the broadcast, we needed to see which team would show up, and... Uh, we saw it, we got the answer from Brown, not to take anything away from Fordham, but we just got what we needed to answer out of Brown. He's Dan Rubin. I'm John Broker. This is Brown University with a winning Brown Bears team over the Fordham Rams. We thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>